very good for Zerg in particular. So Serral maybe getting the slight upper hand going into this particular match. Either way, I'm excited for it, Pig. Heck yeah, let's get on into it in the top right of Equilibrium. He's going to be starting on a map that's disadvantaged for him, but he has shown he has what it takes to compete in enemy territory. In the top right side, representing Team Liquid, Haley. This map, same spawns in terms of the Zerg was on the left, he was on the right, and he weathered an absolutely, absolute storm of madness. It was insane. And it really is one of the things where obviously getting the gold base up is big for the Zerg, getting established is very powerful. It's hard for the Terran to finish you off. And that's where Clem struggled, but Clem actually showed that the size of the map worked to his advantage in the late game because the Zerg also could not overwhelm him and he was able to mass expand, absorb those punches and overwhelm. This time though, he's opened up with a very different, much more aggressive opening. Yeah, you can make sure here that Saro has also watched those games. He knows exactly what to expect on Clem, or from Clem rather, on a map like this. This is a double barracks opener from our Terran player. Popular build over the last year or so. Beyond popularized this some time ago, starting off with three Reapers in basically every single game. These days we see a lot of two Reaper openers. We also actually see up to five. It depends on whether or not the Zerg decides to go for a third hatchery. Now so far, nothing all too crazy here for Serral. He is gonna be taking that third nice and early. And yeah, we'll see if Clem is gonna be able to punish him for it. Yeah, CV poking around the drone, already hiding far south, taking a uh, detour to make sure that it does not get caught by the SCV or the Reapers. The Reapers are very mobile, fast units. They can deny your creep spread, and they can limit you from moving out to take a third. So Sarah Liss said, no worries, I'll move out a minute ahead of time. Hide that drone. And now the first Reaper's coming in, seeing if we can get the tax, the Reaper tax, something which very few players avoid. We'll see what Serral can do with his micro. Just four Zerglings out. He's trying to rotate back the weak ones to the rear, even using a drone to get a bit of a nibble on that Reaper. And it does take just one Zergling kill. Absolutely. In the meantime, that third hatchery has started up, and Clem is going to go past the three Reapers. So we already have Reaper number three and four on the production tab. This is a unit that has a lot of micro potential, but of course it slows down any follow-up as well. You have to be so careful. That rightmost upgrade on the production tab for the Zerg, it's Ooh. metabolic boost. And that's going to make those Reapers very vulnerable. Catching a Reaper with slow Zerglings would have been uh, <laughs> an impressive feat, but even getting a bit of damage does scare him a little bit. Three command centers in a factory behind this. Clem, if he can get this base cancel, that's massive. I love these grenades. He's trying to bounce those queens away from the hatchery. Clem not committing just yet. He's decided, oh, let's go after the queens. He oh. knows he's got a few seconds before Link Speed finishes. A very aggressive maneuver. But you know what? So far, Serral's micro is good. Link speed is so close to finishing. That first queen does go down. Absolutely. The third hatchery will be saved. If he can grab the second queen, however, that would be amazing. And indeed, he does. A flying start here for Clem, because in the meantime, he also forced out tons of Zerklings. This is not a good start here for Serral. It slows down any follow-up aggression as well, right? Because that creep spread is going to be so hindered. There's the Stimpak on the back of this. He already brought up the third command center. This is certainly not an all-in here for Clem. This is just, well, step one in a multi-layered approach. Zero fear for Clem, leaving his door wide open right now. I gotta say, that that looks a bit like a hero wall. That's, yeah, uh, that's not perfect. <laughs> it's, uh, he does, okay, he fixes it, seals it. Still got a depot in the middle and a depot in the south. Two points of weakness. Reapers diving in. You don't want to lose these Reapers, but the fact that they're on the Zerg side of the map is so cocky from Clem. Wow. He's getting rewards. He gets a queen. I doubt he gets out of here. Three queens, though, is amazing. He's aiming for a fourth. He's going to try and occupy this high ground for a little bit longer. Fourth queen? Wow. No. Man, that is more value than you should be able to get. I think one queen may be acceptable, but four and a drone? That's incredible for, uh, for the Terran here. Serral is very impressively not looking frustrated. I was really just staring at his camera that whole time as the, the third and the fourth queen went down. I was like, let's look at Serral's reaction to this because that's frustrating. It's not the end of the world. He did build five Reapers. It's an expensive opening. Oh, beautiful ambush. And Clem not happy with that. He already gave up map control by losing the Reapers. Now losing his first two Hellions. Serral is actually staying calm in the face of a heavy pressure opening. So what Clem is very good at is that tempo play. He loves the momentum that that bio army brings. He can hit in the face of the opponent and then come back a little bit later, do another hit, right? And he piles on the pressure in multiple layers. 
Because of this opener, and because he managed to snipe those queens, the creep spread is going to be severely hindered here for Sero. He's forced to either commit to, well, less queen inject, or he's going to have to commit to that creep spread. He doesn't really have the luxury to go for both here for just a little while, and that really slows down any Zerg approach in this game, and it makes any follow-up aggression from Clem significantly more powerful. That being said, though, grabbing those Hellions, it swings the momentum back in favor of Serral, at the very least ever so slightly. Gold base now being started. Liberator in the north does take out a few drones. Two of them going down before Serral reacts. Clem quick to micro the Liberator, not leaving any easy targets sitting out in the open. And of course, his third command center's landed. Serral with only a seven worker advantage. He wants more than that. He is droning quite hard. The lair has only just oh, begun. Oh, oh. Man, those, uh, those hands of the drones are almost within the liberator. <laughs> They're going to scoot ever so slightly forward, but okay, that now uh, yeah allows the spore crawler to get within reach. Nice defense here by the finisher. This is interesting because Serral, I think his numbers look fine, but it's his tech that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Baneley Nest has just started. It's going to be nine minutes when Baneley Speed finishes. And really, uh, what can Clem do in that period is the question. It's equilibrium, so it's a big map. It's hard for Clem to straight up kill him, but definitely we've got Stim, Shields, 1-1, one, one, all getting close to finish, Medivacs and Marines on the way. You've still got a Liberator and Hellions out there. So Clem's preserved his units really well. He's kind of been recycling, and he's ready to poke in from multiple sides. And if he can overwhelm Serral a little bit, I mean, the Marines are the big problem. That's going to demand a lot of Serral's attention but that means the Liberator could get big damage back in the main. Serral decided to rush out that gold base here. This is a high ground, of course, that Clem can certainly make use of. There are a lot of queens once more available. 1-1 one, one is going to finish up for the Zerk in just a moment, but at this point, it's not done yet here for either player. Oh, we don't mind getting a decent connection. Nothing all too amazing. The queens are out of energy, though. These Marines are heavily damaged. Clem knows he can't oh. take any chances, and great defuse of the Widow Mine. That one Zergling drags it, takes the one hit for his buddies. Fourth command center going up behind this for Clem. Units lost is, of course, pretty good for Clem, but he hasn't found the big mark. You know, he hasn't he hasn't done big damage. He hasn't gotten a drone line. The creep is getting a decent bit of control in the center of the map as well. So whilst he's keeping Serral from exploding, the problem is that gold base is now up. And with the gold base and the purple gas on it, Serral's income is going to explode. Failing speed, though, still not done. It only just now started. About nine minutes is what you said. I think that is indeed a right. Up until that point, Clem should be able to fight on creep relatively comfortably. Dropping the main base right now as well. Ooh. Liberator still being annoying. No defensive units for Serral just yet, but he's sending them down. That does leave Ooh, the fourth base a lot more vulnerable. Good splits, though. Yeah, that Widowmine, I didn't even know how that fired so far. Zerglings dragged them so far away. A mostly Widowmine drop does get some damage. Ten drones falling down in the south. The Hellback Marine still hanging out. Baneling Speed's not done yet, but the Queens have held on really well. I definitely felt like this window would be even scarier for Serral. His work account's not what he wants it to be, but the gold base, as long as he holds solid, if he can push this army back with Baneling Speed, Serral's gonna be okay. Absolutely. Clem trying to pile on the pressure. He did not forget about the armory or anything along those lines. He's continuously upgrading here. Marines are trying their very best, but when Bailing Speed finishes, and that is done right now, those Bailings are going to be able to roll forward. Great splits once again by finisher. By the finisher here, I mean, he's doing a fantastic job dealing with all of those mines. Now the Bailings are starting to roll forward. Good splits as well, though, by Clem, mitigating as much of that damage as possible. Great reaction by Clem. These Marines heavily damaged. Those Medivacs are out of juice, but he does save most of the Marines to send them back to heal, attacking the north at the same time. Clem is keeping Serral's supply low enough that I think it feels okay for him, despite that gold base, of course, being a very present thorn in his side. The Marines and Mines in North being annoying. Serral wants to get a counterattack going. This is exactly what you need to do. You can't just let Clem be the aggressor all game long, but Clem reacting rather slowly, despite having a sense of tower vision. Ling Bane rolling in. There is only one Baneling left, but the SCVs are vulnerable. Yeah, the SCVs have to run away. No more Banes available in this section of the map at the very least. So that's going to make things a little easier here for Clem. But that was not quite the perfect defense that we hope to see. Six SCVs in total. That is recoverable, of course. But in the meantime, the wind was also taken out of the sills of the Terran inside of the main base, as well as at the bottom of the map. Sarah so will need to be on cleanup duty. He's going to need a lot of overseers constantly rebuilding to clean these Widow Mines up that are spreading across the map. I like this big attack on the south getting ready, and that's enough units to bust through a base. Clem is saying, okay, let's get back in the offense where I'm most comfortable, but he hasn't dotted his I's and crossed his T's. He's left that army in the south. That hole in his map vision is about to get punished.
Yeah, there's a planetary fortress set up, so that's at least something. We don't mind, okay? Ooh, got dragged so far that it almost re-detonated. Either way, this base is in a lot of trouble. Nice little bit of micro, though, with those SCVs, popping them into the command center, only to come out on the other side once again. But that's 14 SCVs, as well as a command center going down here. And that is a big loss right here for Klim. That's so crucial, because look, Serral's Creep is getting out across the map. He's stabilized on 82 workers. He's found a room to get to Hive. And Clem, of course, as a Terran, does not have have an easily reproducible economy. He can't build 15 drones at a time. He can't chronoboost those command centers. Of course, he's got a new fourth base down. He's building a fifth command center. But if Serral can find one more move like that, it feels like he's just going to it overwhelmed Clem in the economy game. Clem will not be able to keep up if he keeps losing his fourth base. Zero apparently feeling confident right here to even move a little bit off creep. Does get punished for it with a big Widow Mine hit. Clem though starting to dwindle a little bit in that supply count, remaking the fourth command center over at the low ground, which is a bit risky, but these links will be cleaned up. Kale's everywhere though. In the meantime, by the way, Hive is finishing up for the Zerg player too, so he'll probably be powering up into maybe a couple of Vipers, Adrenal Glands, could even think about Ultralisk here. Ghost Academy is finishing up. It's gonna be a Lurker Den, that's an interesting one. That Lurker Den is actually relatively late. I definitely agree with that, Loco. It's going to be lurkers, and they're good for killing planetaries, right? They get the SCVs repairing. They're great at dealing with bio. They're also very annoying to, like, knight us in the back of the base. So they can create problems for your opponent. But it's not like, oh, I've got 10 lurkers. You've got no counter to this. I'm going to take you out. There's no way. Serral's going to be dealing with a Clem that is now established on his side of the map. And whilst he was pushed back for a while, Clem is heading to late game. He's got lots of command centers on the way. I believe the Ghost Academy is finished. Yep. I'm now marching across with a maxed out force. His 3 3 is not quite done just yet. But if he could force a fight, say 30 seconds from now, just when 3 3 finishes, he's got a big window where he has a massive upgrade advantage. Drop heading on over into the main base. Queens are waiting on the perimeter here too. They're gonna be able to push this back relatively nicely. In the meantime, big fight over here. Also not going too great for the Zerg. Concussive shells being remembered as well. Such a vital upgrade as these heavy Marauder counts come in. The eight racks is really flowing out that production. Good hold in the main though by Serral. His queen defense has been on point all game long. Marines poking their way in there, but it looks like they're AFK for a second. The Overseas and Hydras deal with it. The attack in the south is the more important one, as it looks like he's really just putting a dent in the creep in the mid. Ghost production really exploding behind this as well. And a new command center being added every minute or so. Whenever Clem gets a bit of extra minerals, more command centers popping up in that tab. Absolutely. Establishing the Iron Bank. That is the main goal right here for our Terran. Maybe the tempo advantage has not gone the way that he wanted it to, but he is going to be able to play that big macro game. And that is something that Clem has really improved in over the course of the last year. Now, it's a Night as Worm follow-up right here for our Zerg. There's an Overseer flying at the northern section of the map. No vision right there for that sensor tower. So if Serral yeah. manages to pop a worm inside of the main base and bring a bunch of lurkers across, that could be disastrous. Oh, big ambush right now. So many Widow Mines caught cool. on Burrowed in the front line. He does let them burrow and they get decent hits, but a lot of Widow Mines already went down. Nice parasitic bombs in the south. Medivac's getting popped. Clem is so occupied right now. He is not watching for the Nidus Worm. Serral is starting to push him back on both sides. I'd love to check in on that unit's last up because it feels like normally you want to be at least 25% ahead. Serral's keeping those numbers surprisingly close. There it is. It's going up into the main base right now. Is Clem ready for this? Obviously, as the game goes on, Terrans are moving further and further out into the map. He does have a couple units popping out of those barracks inside of the main base, so it looks like he will be able to deflect it, but just barely. Ooh, nice taking out there. A bunch of those Widow Mines, uh, oh, sorry, those Banelings with the Widow Mines in the bio. The Marauder Ghost starting to hang out. Oh, Serral's being very annoying. You need to build a Viking at this point. You can't be letting him pop Nidus's here because this is just a way he draws your attention. Clem needs to already be microing armies in two or three places at once, and he's in danger of getting punished and abducted into those Hydras. Those could be full Medivacs going down. It's a big counterattack on his third base, and there we go, abducting a full Medivac. It falls. Serral with a fantastic move. Clem's reinforcements do come up, though. He drops behind the mineral line. Serral has to fall back, oh. but guess what? That pulled his attention to the front. The Nidus Worm is up in the back of the main. An oversight from Clem letting the multiple overseers in the back is costing him big time. Fantastic multitasking right here by Serral. Classic one-two punch, distracting the opponent, and now suddenly the floodgates have been opened. There's another Knight as Worm. I think that's in the natural of our Terran player. Lurkers are gonna go back into the Worm. They'll pop out over in the natural expansion, and now suddenly Clem has to put out fires in seven different areas at once. He was previously yeah. on the side of the Zerg, right? But that is long gone. The gold base is exposed. Serral's gonna pounce on it. And that is beautiful. He says, you are so distracted. You can't defend down here at the same time. The Bailings go north. A massive fungal ambush was just off camera to the north there. Wow. 
I was wondering why all the Banelings diverted north. Turns out in the midst of that, Serral had set up an Infester, burrowed underground, waited for that army to rotate, and he pounced. You cannot give this man an inch or he's going to take a mile. That was about as good a start as you can get. S. Kalem, especially against Serral. He got four queens with five Reapers and then also a drone. I don't even remember the last time that that has happened. That is a fantastic start for Terran. And usually what happens is that that slowly flows into a game where Terran is just going to be able to put on a little bit more pressure and then even more damage. And then ultimately, the big timing attacks, they allow you to win the game. Even though he dealt so much damage, Serral shut it down. Serral yep. did not really seem to be too hindered. He had to make some... Tactical decisions there to get back into the game, maybe taking that gold base, for example, a little bit quicker than he really wanted to. He had to cut some corners. His baneling speed was very late, but this was incredibly well handled by Serral. Going for the third hatchery and then not committing and saying, you know what, I'm not going to commit to that because I might not get it, but I can take out those queens. He got great damage. Serral did immediately answer. You know, that was what was really well done. And you could see the work account for him was not terrible. It was a nice momentum for Clem. But Serral just didn't let him capitalize on it. And then these small little tactical run bys just kept going in, right? It was a few Banelings there. This Zergling Baneling, just when Clem was trying to move back across the map, that was such a big surprise. And I really think this took the wind out of Clem's sails. Uh, it's, it's so fascinating to see the way Serral was just kind of in position to take advantage of him. And it felt like, oh, once again, Clem was about to stabilize, but he didn't deal with these Overseers. I mean, you, you've got to have a Viking ready, basically, to hunt them down. You've got to have either turrets on the edges or Vikings. Once they get in the back, because he had one behind the natural and the third as well, another Overseer, he could just keep popping Nidus's in three different locations. And that's going to cost him zero supply, zero, very little attention for Serral. For Clem, he's running Marines and Marauders around in a situation where you're already at your limit. I mean, if you're trying to micro bio mine Ghost on two fronts and at home against multiple Nidus Worms, it gets out of control. So Clem has to be very cautious about giving Serral opportunities to distract him. Now, Equilibrium was certainly Serral's map pick. That means that this map, next map right here has been decided by Clem. The map is hard left. Bottom right in corner. Representing Team Liquid, it's Clem. Big get power indeed. Well, he's going to need it because this man in the top left is looking fantastic so far. In the top left, representing Basilisk. He is a fantastic Zerg. He's up 1 0. It is Zero. Widely hailed as the greatest player of all time. His consistency over the last six years of his career have been second to none. Mm -hmm. First uh, finished high school at the end of 2017, <laughs> yeah. immediately made a grand finals. Didn't win his first one, lost to Neeb over there. And uh, then he basically won everything for a year and a half or so. <laughs> After that, very few losses on his record. And uh, what's been interesting is seeing Serral every year or two redefine himself since then. Show completely different builds, very different styles. He went from a very defensive player to a very aggressive player. Lots of Nidus Worms, lots of mid-game timing attacks, and uh, just really clever build preparation for his opponents. I, I think this is the edge Serral has. I think if Serral goes in playing Clem, and he doesn't know it's Clem, it's a barcode or something like that, I think Clem is gonna beat him the majority of the time because Clem has such ridiculous speed, and in a standard game, Clem is so hard to match. Serral, however, knowing Clem's habits, he realizes that Clem, if you let him get going, is nearly unstoppable. And he has so many plans in place to basically, just when he's about to get going, Ling Bane's gonna hit the base, take out the fourth. He has to pull home for that. You know, just when he's moving out, Banelings are hitting his base as he's microing two fronts. Serral will have his entire game plan adapted specifically to try and take down Clem. You're absolutely right. It's important here for Clem to not really get too frustrated in this series, because I can imagine, right, you're loading up on Equilibrium, we're like, okay, this is going to be a tough map, it's Serral's map pick, I'm gonna try my very best, but you know what, I don't really necessarily need to win this one. And then you get that fantastic start, grabbing all those queens, you're like, oh man, this is, this is going really well. If he has a worse start in this particular match, and it's gonna be hard to get a better one, it's important here for Clem that he does not get tilted over such facts, right? Because it's very easy to get stuck in your own head. This has the potential to be a very long series. It's only a 1-0 advantage for now for Serral. I think Clem has the capabilities to get back into this. In the meantime, by the way, that drone has done a full loop around the bases. Low ground third has already been taken. It wasn't the primary choice here for the finisher, 
Oh, for it. he died in the air. Mid-air shot on that drone. Basketball player Clem over here. Yeah, I was thinking like this Reaper's like a, you know, clay shooting or something. <laughs> it tosses it up in the <laughs> air and just shoots it down. Very cool quick draw maneuver. Third command center on the way behind it. Clem's favorite opening build order. We'll see if it's yep. the Viking, the Lib, the Viking Lib or the Banshees. <laughs> Banshees mm. is most common. And uh, Serral, when he does more like roach aggression, especially, you'll see Clem go for the Banshee very often. But if he feels like, no, 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 I just want to have smooth, constant aggression, usually it's just straight into the Liberator is the easiest way to put pressure on for the lowest cost. Absolutely, and that is something Clem has been favoring a lot as of late, right? We seem to go through phases in this matchup where Darren's are going Banshees almost every game and then they're going Liberators every game. These days, it's a little bit of both. Now, we have the Tech Lab coming up. We'll probably see the big switcheroo inside of that main base momentarily. So it's Hellions and Banshees with a quick third command center. I know this is not the build that Clem invented, but in my mind, this is the Clem opener. You know, this is the yeah. build that he's incredibly good at. You have a big economy. You can't really well, lose the game, assuming you micro well early on, because you have all of the tools you need to defend. Problem, of course, is that now you're going up against Serral, and he will be more than happy to play this macro game. Yes, he likes to reinvent himself from time to time. Yes, he likes timing attacks these days, but he's more than happy to play the big macro game. Serral's playing kind of dirty as well. I mean, it's, uh, in terms of how clean it is, I mean, like, it's it's frustrating. It's so it's so clean, it's dirty? Yeah. Yeah, that's, like, <laughs> literally the feeling Clem has. He's like, did you just run in, kill an SCV, scout my entire base, and run away? Like... Can you not do that, please? <laughs> like, this is not fair, mate. Uh, cute adjustment from Clem, though. He was not planning to go cloak. He was just going to play like a single cloakless Banshee. <sighs> then he got scouted, and <laughs> Serral saw no cloak, so he started cloak. And now I think he's going to cancel cloak when that dies. It's so funny because getting one Zorkling in is hard, right? And now we just see him getting follow-up checks in as well to make yeah. sure, are you still researching that upgrade? Are you still actually doing what you were originally doing? Yes, this is about as standard as a, oh, of a game here from our Terran as possible. But Serral making sure that he is 100% aware of what's going on. We do not yet have a Baneling Nest, do we? We don't yet have a Roach Warren either. Could this be the Hydra style that we saw from Scarlet earlier? No, Serral would never play that. Uh, <laughs> what I'm thinking, but, oh, it looks, it does look like it. I think it's just a little late. It, it actually looked exactly like it. You made a mistake. Little... No way. <laughs> I'm like, I could not. I, I haven't asked Serral about it, but I can hear in my head his response if I asked him about the Hydra build. Yeah. There'd be a raised eyebrow and a bit of condescension in his voice, I bet. Like, <laughs> if, he, if he hasn't played with it a bunch, and like it is, because it is actually a really cool build, but yeah, I think Scarlet's the only one who knows how to make that work right now. So we'll see if that Banshee in the top can uh, get that hatchery. It's a lot of damage right now. The Reaper Alien picking off the Queen's Queens are almost out of Transfuse. Thumbs being a nuisance. I don't think he finishes this off, but I think he's damaged it enough that in the future, Marines may be able to stim in and snipe that. Uh, Benchy's trying to get some shots in on the Queens. Overseer is nearby, though. I think it's Ow. about time we disengage. <laughs> Very, very <laughs> over-the-top micro from Clem there. Yeah. You're looking for a bit much. Individually, he was yeah. never going to get a queen there, but... No, we can get two, nice. two more hits in before. Like, <laughs> don't, don't lose the Banshees, mate. Oh, and this is part of Clem. here. Clem's play is all about excitable, opportunistic uh, micro. So, you know, he dives in, gets a queen. He did harass her heavily on the top. Baneling speed is now started. Uh, is that only one Evo chamber on the way right now? Did he forget mm -hmm. the second one? That seems very... For this late in the game, you almost always want to be playing double Evo chamber. Yes. Ah, uh, uh, no, he, he just made one initially, and now he's added on the second one a little bit later. You're absolutely right. This would be a very late set of upgrades if he did not go for a second evolution chamber. But ultimately, we do end up with Ling Bane. And that is the unit composition that Zerg players are very comfortable with. Second factory coming up right now. Armory on the production tab. Nice and early. He will not be hindered with the 2-2 research. Yeah. I remember back in the day, a lot of people, just the builds were a bit less refined. Players would get that second factory so much later. But mm -hmm. Clem, even if he's got 1-1 one, one almost finished and you kind of want to build the armory, he always gets the second factory first. Because especially for him, drilling claws is a very important upgrade. Uh, you know, the units unburrow faster. They burrow super quickly. And we've seen multiple times, when does uh, Clem get in trouble in these games? It's when his Widow Mines are caught unburrowed. But, we're, you know, the drilling claws helps with that massively because you can just very quickly press that button and get out of trouble. Oh, 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 oh that Widow Mine yeah. is close to setting off there. Hitting the Queen's not a big deal. Clem grabs one Queen and disengages. There are, in the meantime, a bunch of Banelings 
set up in a location that are, yeah, it's quite difficult to see. I think there should be Hellions. There we go. That will be able to shut this down. Beautiful Great. Split. splits right there. Yeah, these guys are so incredibly quick, right? Like sometimes you look at these engagements in isolation and you're like, yeah, I could do that. But then if you consider the fact that they're usually microing two, sometimes three areas at once, while also managing everything else, it's kind of ridiculous. Now, this is a nice little engagement right here for Clem. Grabs one of the queens, but he's going to be forced to boost out of there once more. He's keeping Cyril on the edge of almost no energy on those queens. Every time he goes in, the transfusers are barely saving them. And then uh, he's getting a queen and getting out. Drop is on the way. A drop a lord, sorry, for uh, Serral is being morphed. So he's probably just going to do a little Bane Link drop at some point. Mm -hmm. We're going to get it. Oh, beautiful first person view of Serral. It's an absolute treat. The bio coming on that right side. Link Bane is there. He's got to get the Bane Links onto the Hellbats if he wants to engage that push. A second drop. So he's going to go double drop, one on both sides. Oh, I love this play for, for Serral. Really good way of trying to catch oh. him off guard. Widow Mine does get fired into his own units at the top. He's trying to pull back here. So he's going to have to roll Banelings into that. He can't wait much longer. Those Hellbats are coming forward. I like the way he's buying time. And he's got double Baneling drops ready to go in that could take advantage of a distracted Clem. All but right, right now, Clem dives in. Oh my Lord. What? The hatchery lives. The hatchery lives with like two HP. That's absolutely massive. He will be able to transfuse it up. I think he wanted to try and have this be defended at the same time whilst he's dropping the Bane links. That is what he's going to be doing at this point in time. He will have to reestablish the creep. Eyes right now, though, of Clem. Are they pointed towards the third base? Okay, they are. He decides to run those SCVs away because that is one of those situations you don't see it frequently as a Terran, right? Maybe the Protals, they will drop you, but not in the same way that Bane Links would hit you. It's not, it's not quite like a Widow Mine drop, right? Which is a strategy we see all the time, but that, nice response. That would have been absolutely perfect if Cyril could have dropped those mines in the midst of the fighting, but this, is, this just speaks to the pressure that Clem brings. Look at this. Cyril's always half a step behind on being in the exact right position. He's doing pretty good. He gets another Bailing drop in, but the SCVs had pre-evacuated again. And this is the, the game. Zerg versus Saren is about getting your opponent to be looking at the wrong place at the wrong time. Right now, Serral is the one who's playing reactive. He's on the defense. It is Clem who is picking where and when those fights happen. Beautiful hold position into the spready. That one Zergling taking one for the team. Yeah. Speed and momentum. That is what we see all the time. Now, Serral has accidentally forgotten here in the heat of all of this. Well, I said it at least at the start of that sentence about the plus two armor upgrade. It's a bit out of sync. Obviously, one of the evolution chambers was also late. He has, however, caught up with that already. Oh, Marines in the main base. Oh, Ooh, very nice snipe here. Gets through to one of the medevacs. The other medevac is going to go oh. down as well. Great defense there. Clem was busy picking up in the back. He's on the right side again. Clem is flowing right now. He wants that hatchery. It is taunting him. And Serral will not be giving it up easily. Serral is not willing to go back to three bases. Oh. His fifth in the bottom left is very exposed. The Marines click it. He gets it. Clem steals that with a brutal snipe. Gets his Marines out. His pickups are some of the smoothest in the game. Absolutely, that creep never re-established in that area of the map either. Luckily for Serral, he did remake a hatchery over at the 9 o'clock position on the map, so at the very least he's going to be able to continue mining with those workers, but they are going to be distracted for just a little while. Hive tech will be coming up momentarily, plus three starting up right now for the Terran. We've got ourselves a very nicely paced game here. Yeah, it's so high level. And honestly, it's getting to this point where it's not quite late game. They're kind of crawling to the later stages because so much is happening. There are so many engagements. Oh, those Widow Mines not burrowed. Oh, Glenn with a bit of a sloppy move forward gets punished. Serral dives on it opportunistically and says, that's what happens if you don't burrow your Widow Mines, mate. Gets rid of all the Widow Mines without taking any big hits. This drop's going to try and distract. He's got an attack on the right side at the same time. Looks like Serral's there as well. Bailing's wow. connecting with the Marines. Serral defends on all sides. Even in behind the natural, the medevac just got shot down. Beautiful production, by the way, from our observing team. Just shout out to those guys for catching all this action. I'm having a bit of a headache just trying to follow it on the minimap, but this is insane. The pace these guys are playing at, and Serral, even though he was on the back foot for a while, you can see he's now in the driver's seat, and it's Clem that is reacting to him. Yeah, one thing I don't like, though, for Serral is the amount of creep that he's got, especially if you compare it to some of the previous games we've seen him play. Yes, he's got a decent amount of the map covered, but this is certainly not a situation where we can, well, really decisively say that this is a massive advantage for the Zerg. Yes, he's been cleaning up all the aggression. Clem is going to have to be playing this a little bit slower now. Serral also does have that tech lead, but I still think there's a a lot of opportunities here for Clem to get back into the swing of things here. Lurker then, however, is coming up. Infestors. Well, we saw one big fungal in game number one of this series. Cero is going to be looking for that here once again. A sane Terran might have to play a bit more cautiously, Loco, but this isn't a sane 
Baron, this is clam. This man never stops attacking. I love it. He got pushed back to his side and he immediately just grabs his army and pushes over here. Serral's actually doing a big counter attack, denying that base. Lots of Widow Mines making it kind of awkward to engage. He's going to split a few Banelings into that third mineral line. Those could get some big hits, but oh, even there, he's spreading in the midst of everything else. Great spreads for Clem to minimize the damage. In the meantime, Clem also managed to shut down that base in the middle of the Zerg expansion. So that high ground expo not going to happen here for Serral just yet. There is, however, a light at the end of the tunnel of all of this Terran aggression, and that is the Lurkers. Seismic Spines, the rightmost upgrade, well, at least it was the rightmost upgrade just a second ago. That one is going to make this defense so much easier, but Clem once again moves forward, gets the cancel on that base. Concussive Shell Marauders are being mixed in in heavier numbers now that there's eight racks up, and they're very good for stalling out the front line. Also means if Banelings are hitting them, they're really not that effective. Spore Crawler finishes at the perfect time. Of course, the drones still need to pull away. Hmm. Clem, one of his biggest late game tools is Liberator Harass. It's a low APM oh. way to get big damage. Well, I say low a little APM. too low right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Serral's all over it, man. Serral's really not letting him get any big advantages. Oh, my lord. That fungal! One that one fungal, boy. He's looking oh! for it. Massive fungal. Clem is not happy with that. He only saves one or two units. Widow Mines firing into his own units as well. He is on the run. It's, a, it's an absolute rout. His entire army is fleeing in disarray. His command center is lifted. SCVs are take, get, getting taken out, as are the depots. A lot of Zergs would have dived there looking for the victory. But Serral is not any other Zerg. He is calm and collected in the face Incredible. of what seems like an intense moment. He says, no, 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 wait for the Lurkers, wait for the Adrenal, get the next upgrades. I'm just gonna keep ripping him apart technically, clinically, and even though you can see him kind of puffing out his cheeks and exhaling, you can tell Serral does feel that pressure, but he doesn't show it in his gameplay. Oh, you're absolutely right. Usually whenever we see that transition towards Lurkers, it's taken a little bit slower, right? Zerks will just step off the gas for a moment and then they continue the aggression. But Serro has been going the entire time. Moving on the right side once again. Where that's oh! Base located. Engagement over here. Well, oh! Clem is distracted on the left against those Lurkers. GG is called. Serral looking absolutely incredible here in this series. This game was a little scary for him but he just looks so dominant. Recruiting some Widow Mines at the tail end of that battle to shoot down his own friendly medevac. Serral, you can tell, not completely satisfied with how these games went. There is room for improvement in his head. Yeah. What I saw, you're playing against probably the best Terran versus Zerg player in the world right now, a player who's on fire in this tournament, and you have just taken away his map. Clem said in his interview yesterday, the way it works with the veto system is usually, especially if they're player A, you have to play two Zerg maps in the first three. You've just got to kind of survive those those first three games in a best of five. If you get to maps four and five, it's going to get a lot easier. But now being down 0-2, Clem has no lives left. You're absolutely right. That means that Serral is going to be the one who gets to pick the next map. Although, interestingly enough, it's going to be Elcyone. Oh, uh, okay. So maybe it was actually Clem who was A in this one. Yeah. A bit of a better map. I know he feels confident there. Uh, not sure if Serral is uh, like Solar, keen on Solaris. Most Zergs usually are pretty happy there. I have seen him play it a yeah. lot recently versus Maru and the like. So that's probably going to be map four. And uh, of course, usually the Decider is going to be one of those maps that's very evenly balanced between the two. No real favored. But uh, honestly, it's it's momentum is huge because mentality-wise... Clem focuses on getting advantages and then running with those advantages and building them and getting momentum until he is an absolutely unstoppable force. Mm -hmm. Serral right now is doing what Serral is an expert at and he's shown over the years, he's not letting the ball get started rolling. He is keeping it completely stationary and it's on this man to find a way to break out. This is his last chance. He needs to now win three games in a row against the greatest player of all time. If anyone can do it, it's gonna be him. He's gonna need your energy now more than ever. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Clem. And down here in the bottom left, the man who looks nearly unstoppable in this tournament. Playing with the blue Zerg drones, representing Basilisk, he is Serral. <laughs> Calm and collected. Serral has got that surgical precision, right? We see it go so well for Clem so frequently in this matchup when he gets a bit of damage done and then ultimately he overwhelms you with layers upon layers of aggression. But Serral, he 
he halts it somehow, right? Midway yeah. through all of those pushes, he's like, no, this sequence of events is gonna go my way. I will clean up the drop, I will clean up your army, I'll do some damage with a Baneling counter attack. And suddenly that momentum, it swings. So often do we see Clem play this matchup and he grabs the, well, the reins at like minute three and he never lets go. But yeah, even though he had some of that going in the previous game, Cero, he managed to put a halt to it. and. That makes the game so difficult to play for Clem. It's so hard to get going when he's just always got a few more links and veins there. And it's so funny because like, it's it's just Serral, you know, even if he ends up with a 3-0 here, that a lot of people who say, oh, it looked like there was no chance, Serral's just better. And he does this to everybody. Serral comes in with so much preparation to take away your strength, your strong points. And it's little details. Notice whenever Clem is engaging on one side, Serral will try to counterattack on the other side or send the Baneling Buster the run by him. He realizes that if he just kind of purely says, oh, okay, you move here, I'll try to counter move. Like, just like react with the micro in that one position. Clem's going to out micro him because he's got ranged units with Stim and Medivax. Like, you, you, there's not much you could do with Ling Bane there other than be in the right position. What you can do is you can overload the Terran by hitting them in two or three other places at the same time. And that's when they start to make mistakes. And Serral keeps doing that over and over. Not to mention, of course, just having extra units and his queens always in every position to stop the aggression before it gets started. Absolutely. Third base so far, the Knight. Clem has decided to leave that SCV on patrol command in that location, which makes it quite difficult for the Zerg to take it. This may very well prompt Serral, though, to go for a different strategy altogether. Sometimes we see Zergs looking at this and they're like, you know what? I'll just make a Roach Warren and I'll try and go for a cheeky little bust on your side of the map. Zero will still try and take it, but at the very least, his build order plan here, it's been pushed back. I'm being very annoying in the start. I really like this. And he's even going to bounce the Queen further away. No creeps ready for you. <laughs> You're going to be uh, further over to the right side. That third hatchery got quite delayed. and. The link speed being very early, Serral's opening ends up not being quite as efficient as he'd like. If it was a 15 hatchery, yeah. 15 pool, he'd already have his natural saturated. But of course, he's building a bunch of Zerglings. So he's actually building these Zerglings very fast. Mm -hmm. which I find fascinating. I guess he's going to look for a run by into the natural. So I think he's going to sneak these Lings around probably the left side of the map and then try to run in as the Hellions leave. Very likely. Usually Terrans will send... Oh, nice snipe. Usually Terrans will send all of their units to watch the other side of the map to harass the Zerg and to, for example, slow down that creep spread. But indeed, we have about 10 or so links on the left side of the map. There's going to be a few available as well at home, ready to defend. The bases are wide open, but Serral does not quite know that, right? He knows the timing at which Hellion 3 and 4 will spawn. They're popping right now. So I guess Serral will commit at like 4 minutes and 10-ish seconds. If the Hellions move out, that's okay. Yeah, he's he does not for. see them moving out. Well, there they go. Uh, yeah, this is it. Serral does not want to let Clem get in his comfort zone. He knows that if Clem starts having success with attacks, he's going to bounce back. There you go. But right now, Clem is in a fragile state because he's he's just not finding any success. His confidence is waning. Serral is doing everything he can to take away the momentum. And the lovely backstab. It's going to find four or five SCVs at least. Not to mention the Hellion Reaper distracted on the front. The Reaper almost goes down. Clem could try to do a counterattack. These Hellions nicely placed in that main base. Clem does have some of the best SCV Hellion Micro in the game. These Hellions taking damage on the front. He's got to be careful. Absolutely. Overlord even flying on over in this direction too. Not exactly sure what it is up to, but it will end up getting sniped. Either way, Serral sees the exact follow-up as well, right? In a way, this is like a nice scout. Ah, I wouldn't have minded if he decided to commit a little further with those Hellions, but he didn't know that there were no Zerklings ready to defend. And I mean, he's so eager to counterattack. Now he's taken nine SCVs this early, which is so bad for a Terran at this early juncture. But guess what? What do you do to get back? Well, you're Clem, you counterattack. You're a great attacking player. You don't want to be stuck on the defense. But this leaves another opening. Yeah. Serral is looking to just basically let nothing happen on Clem's schedule. Serral, first person view here. Oh, the Marine reaction was pretty slick there as they do try to get guarded by the SCVs. But those Marines do get surrounded. Serral is being a massive nuisance to play against. Clem not having this early game go his way. I look game at three. it, right? Clem forced to send all of his units back with the exception of that Liberator. That Liberator is super late here. 1-1 one, one upgrades are going to start up here, but yeah, wind out of the sails. I think that's the best way to describe it. Clem really loves being the aggressor in this match. And while he has gotten a lot better at being the defender, right? For example, that style that Maru likes to play, 
So far, this game is not going his way at all. First lucky break for Clem. His Liberator spotted the next round of Lings that were going for the run by. He pulled his Hellions back in anticipation. The, the thing that doesn't bode well for Clem is his build is looking quite messy at home. He's had to spend a bit more APM kind of fixing up his building add-ons, reorganizing his workers, his saturation. He's uh, built an extra Reaper accidentally as we saw it popped out of his barracks there at home as well. It's a, a bit of wasted 50 gas. So a few small mistakes happening for Clem. And he's got to be prepared because he's seen now Serral's game plan. It's, it's to attack you when you want to be attacking him. You're going to need a little bit of extra insurance as Clem. Whenever you want to move out with a big attack in the rest of the series, you need to have spotting units out there. You need to check your edges, your corners, to make sure he's not waiting for you to move out and, and mm -hmm. be out of position. Now, by the way, if this is making you nauseous, these are some of the absolute fastest player in the, <laughs> the players in the entire game. When we talk about the fastest players, usually Clem and Raynor come to mind. Sarah, of course, we saw his first person view a little bit ago, also incredibly quick. But Clem, you can see that he's double checking, he's rechecking, and he's, well, making 100% sure that everything is A OK okay for now. But yeah, in the previous games, we saw him being the aggressor at this stage in the game already. Now he's been forced to sit back. He's got the Hellions, however. He's got the Armory, a little late maybe, but he's going to be able to morph these Hellbats, or these Hellions rather, into Hellbats in just a moment. And they're going to be able to join in the push. Liberator does get shut down. Serral's been on point with that Liberator defense. I feel like the Liberators are a big part of Clem's success in Atlanta and some of the other tournaments, but Serral has adapted, adapted and adjusted. Couple Hellions get surrounded. Good. Oh, Zerkling run by once again over in the natural expansion of the Terran. And that is incredibly expensive because once more, Clem is forced to play defensively. Bailing speed is on the horizon, and that makes any base defense for Zerk so much easier, especially on creep. Speaking of which, that creep is already really far out. 2 2 has fired up before the Terran's 2 2 because Clem, yeah, there he fires it up too, but Clem was not quite 100% on point with the armory. That Widow Mine's placed okay, but it won't actually necessarily track those Zerglings. Nope. Uh, so it needs to be north a little bit or out to the left a bit. But hopefully it spots units coming in, or at least some of them, and indeed it did in this case. I was going to say, look, Serral has shown his hand. He's run, he's done run by six times in this game. You've got to deal with it. Oh, he doesn't catch the other Zerglings up there. So a second Widow Mine out here is a great idea. I love Clem putting out some of that extra insurance we were talking about. But those uh, Lings in the top, I think they're all morphing into Banes now as well. They are going to roll into his natural or third and cause him a lot of problems. Marines are on the front. Not a lot of Widow Mines with this. The Ling Bane with a big juicy surround. Serral pulling back at the perfect moment just as the extra Widow Mines arrive. Absolutely. He's once again going to try and do this a roll by as soon as the Terran player is distracted. So preferably when Clem is busy microing his main army. Serral hanging out over here and not really taking any chances. Just barely outside of the vision range of Clem, but now he does get vision off it. Terran army in the meantime, though. Okay. This is a nice cleanup here for Clem. Those Banelings are not achieving much. Banelings are expensive as well. Remember, each one costs a total of 75 resources. So that is not cheap. Clem is actually totally fine in terms of the numbers. The only worry I have is how well he's going to adapt to this game state where yeah. you're stuck defending. It's run bys and run bys, and you're kind of in this position which you don't like being in. If he can adapt to this, I really feel it. it'll be so important for him in a series because if you show an ability to have range as a player where it's like, oh, he's not letting me attack. Oh, I'm just bad now. No, Clem has shown in the last year he can turtle up. He can defend when he needs to. He can be a little bit more light and technical on the pressure and macro up hard behind it. He's slightly behind in the upgrades, but he's going eight racks. He's got a fourth command center building a planetary. The Marines are still being a nuisance <laughs> on the front. <laughs> oh, I was just giggling at the little Marine and Widow Mine mini game there. These guys are so incredibly quick that they can work all the details. Plus two, plus two, though, is finishing up. Serral also cleans up that drop over at the bottom section of the map. At this point, Serral does have two upgrades ahead of his opponent. That is massive. That being said, the Hive is relatively late, all things considered. I think Serral could have started that one up a little bit earlier, and well, that's going to make the 3-3 three, three upgrades once more a bit slower. Nice clean up here by Serral. There's a planetary, but that's enough Link Bane to take it out. Oh no, it's game one all over again, Loco. Oh, oh if the SCVs Does he have enough there. Oh my gosh. I don't think he's got enough. No, there was a little bit of miscontrol right there over at the gas guys. So Serral probably distracted at home as well. So those units nearly, they could have killed the base, but they nearly got the night right there by Clem. I think he focused by the planetary as well. I think he took out like seven, eight Banelings at least before they connected. That was really big. Yeah, the Banelings at the very least blew up close to the gas geyser right there of the Terran. So either it was Clem retargeting the middle of that pack of Banes, or Serral accidentally right-clicked the refinery or something along those lines. Yeah. But that is a lucky break right there for Clem. Wasn't supposed to happen. May that be enough here, because, oh, without a fourth base here, good <laughs> again. But without a fourth base here, this game is a disaster for the Terran.
Indeed, dude, this Widowmine Micro with the Ling Bane back and forth. It's so stressful on either side, but both of them the top of the game when it comes to this multitasking. 3-3 three, three is on the way for Clem. Lurkaden on the way for Serral. Serral's got plus one range upgrade coming in. We'd like to see Adrenal Glands, of course, and plus three Carapace being very important Hive Tech upgrades. But Serral's starving for gas a little bit. Mm -hmm. Clem's not too far behind in supply. He's got very similar work account. Oh, I mean, Zerk thinks Miss Rallied here. That's very expensive. Ooh. That's a lot of units that end up going down. Bailing's chasing this behind. Sadly, there wasn't enough room in the meta vex for all of those bio units. Does get most of those units to the right side. Gathering there, keeping the pressure up. Clem just needs to keep on doing what he's doing. He's building more command centers. He's evolving to the later stages of the game. Yes, Cyril has Lurk Attack, but he doesn't have an abundance of money as he moves forward to this gold base. Cyril's given up on the crazy uh, Ling Bane run buys that he was starting with in the early game. He's going for the Nidus Worm there, which is a fantastic choice. As the Ghosts come out, it's a pretty similar situation to game one. The difference is there are Viking out this time around. So I don't think the Nidus Worms are going to be as big of a problem. That being said, if you oh. can just surround the Marines, that's pretty big. Yeah, these are not links with Adrenal yet, though. They also don't have that many upgrades in general. I mean, it was a nice catch by Cyril, but he can't really capitalize on it. I'm liking this situation a lot better for Clem than just a few minutes ago. He's got a good supply count. He's got a solid economy. He's starting to build up the Ghosts as well as the Command Centers. What Terrans like to do is go upwards of about eh, eight orbital commands and drop mules and scans all game long. The Ghosts notice. and Liberators are amazing as well. Indeed, indeed. Getting to that late game comp. Did he notice the one in the top? Yeah, the Vikings going there. Great play. Great play by Clem. He's actually prepared for it this time with the Vikings. Hopefully he notices that Nidus Worm. Yep, he does. And he's going to be able to shut it down relatively easily. Vikings going after that Overseer is big. That's what we saw lacking on Equilibrium. Clem, well, he basically had to deal with too many fights at the same time. Oh, and ducks could be big here. Yeah, First that's covered terrible. Down. Good split, though, on that meta pack. Yeah, I think there's only two Hydras, actually, or three. So a duck wouldn't have been as powerful there. A lot of units going down on both sides. Bit of a trade as the Spire comes in for Serral, preparing for the Broodlord transition. Uh, attack on the right side is getting ready. Uh-oh, that planetary. I think he's got a big army next to it, though. I see yeah. a big pack of bio mine. Serral's not getting any easy base snipes anymore. It feels like he's completely locked down on five bases. Oh. Um, unless he's not watching it, the Bailings hit his bio a little late on that stim there. The Widow Mine friendly firing as well. Oh, I don't think there's enough Bailings to blow up the planetary at least. So as long as Clem can get these units back and eventually oh. shoot these Bailings down, he might be okay. Serral just unburrowing those lurkers into picture in picture. He's trying to go after that fourth base once again. Links and Banes couldn't clear it earlier, but maybe these lurkers will have a better chance. Ultra Cavern, Spire, and all the rest of it coming up as well for Serral. Terran trying to make a proper transition towards the late game as well. Liberators and Ghosts are the absolute backbone, but Clem is still under so much pressure here. It's so easy to slip up, and here we go. Bailings once again hunting for those SCVs, and the Planetary Fortress is in some trouble, but there's already an Orbital Command close by to replace it. A lesser Terran would have overcommitted to defending this. That was a brilliant call by Clem to pull back most of his workers and just basically say, you need to spend a lot of Banelings, a lot of units on this, but you're not going to you're not gonna take out all the workers as well. Oh, oh no. That's so many Banelings. He can't lose both sides at once. He needs to hold this base, but he's not got the numbers. The Banelings getting massive hits. The Planetary falling. These aren't cheap moves for Serral, but I don't know if there's extra command centers ready to actually replace them. He's going to have to move an orbital on the right and an orbital on the left. He needs new planetaries in front of these, but Clem does not have the cash. Serral using that gold base is massive. Look at the income. Three blue arrows and uh, on both gas and minerals. That means Serral has a massive income advantage right now. Over 2,000 resources a minute extra coming in for him. That is a ris ridiculous numbers advantage. I don't know what you do here is Clem, other than spread out front of those bases. Get as many Widow Mines, Bio Ghosts as you can. And he's got to be pinpoint with EMPing Vipers, stutter stepping back, spreading his units. I mean, and he needs a few good Widow Mine hits as well, because the next waves are going to be so scary. Clem has gotten a lot better over the last year playing from this particular spot. But this is not the, type, the, the style of Terran that he enjoys playing a whole lot. He's forced to sit back. He's forced to absorb every attack from the Zerg. This does give Serral time to get all of the late game upgrades that he needs. He's going into the Neural Parasite as well for Infestors. We don't even have any Infestors yet as the Zerg is once again marching forward. Massive moves here. That's so many Banelings. Oh me, oh my. Clem is in full retreat. The Ghost! Oh, the ghost. oh, oh my no. god, the Ghost end up getting sniped and Clem knows it. That is incredibly expensive. Those units 
take forever to produce. Clem is not a very rich man right now in this game. Lurker's trying to go around the side. Like, wait a second, that's only two Widow Mines. I guess I can get it done. Some miscontrol for Clem. You can see the pain on his face. Those ghosts were meant to spread out. They weren't meant to take those Bane to the face. Serral doesn't take out the base on the right side, but he's denying mining on the left. He made eight overlords at once, so Serral also certainly feeling the heat. A little bit much at the 16 minute mark. Ghosts are coming in and they will be able to shut this down. Ooh, Lingbane Hydra on the right side, gathering up for another wave. This this could be a game ender. This yeah. could be a series ender. This could put Serral to the semi-finals. There's only a few units on the right side. They're wounded. The rest of the army's coming over there right now. Parasitic bombs on the Metavax popping them. Abducts on the Liberators taking them out as well. The Lingbane is running rampant. There's no planetary in the mineral line. The one that is oh. there has to cancel at the 11th hour, lifting and trying to pull back. But Clem doesn't have the numbers. The Ghosts have new Banelings on top of them. Nice start of set for Clem. He's microing his heart out, trying desperately to hang on from behind. But Serral is an avalanche right now, and Clem is one single man trying to hold it back with his bare hands. Serral also rubbing salt in the wound by making a couple infestors right now. Clem is not prepared for that whatsoever. One fungal growth to end it all. The Nidus Worms have been, well, mostly halted for now, but Serral can restart that at any given moment. Now there's also a greater spire coming up, plus three missile. The swarm is everywhere, and Clem, he's been holding the flood back for now, but I've got a feeling that the next wave of Zerg might just be a little bit too much, but Clem does have a little bit of time to stabilize here. He's going into planetaries. There's that Nidus Worm, though. This is just the very first step. Well, those Liberators, they wish they could kill structures like they can in co-op, but not the case in multiplayer. Unfortunately not. Uh, definitely gonna be a bit of a trap, though. If you do pop units out there, there's nothing inside. Serral gathering up his forces. So many players would just be like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta, go, gotta get him now, I gotta get him now. Serral's just so patient. He's so confident at every stage of the game. He never rushes things. When other players get over eager and try to finish things off, Serral calmly and methodically does what he thinks is optimal. Doesn't matter if he's got victory in sight, he will finish you in the most efficient way possible. And that there is delicious. Banelings on the ghosts, does take out a planetary. Yes, Clem holds for now, but he's losing mining in the north. The problem is, even when Clem has a nice hold like that, he's still losing mining on the other side. Yeah, I mean, Clem is to make a, he's still making the best of a very bad situation though. I don't necessarily hate the last four or so minutes of this game for him, considering the spot that he was in. I think the vast majority of Zergs would have already been overwhelmed here, and Clem is getting the most cost-efficient trades that he can really get. Problem is though, this is not Serral running out of cash anytime soon. Serral is at 93 drones. He's got all of the bases taken on his side of the map, and he is prepared to go for a big push. Infestors tunneling forward. There Fung is a miss. Is that a missile turret? No, oh it's god! Tower. Fungal boys sneaking in. No way of seeing those right now. Terran did not have observers. Oh, he's gonna try and make a. Oh, move right now. oh there's the fungal growth. We see his mouth open as the bailings are rolling forward. Clem is gonna try and retreat. Runs away with as many units as possible. Another infester sneaking in from the left. He's got up arrow. Oh. Well, not quite as juicy a fungal this time around, but Clem is losing a lot of very expensive units, and here comes the swarm. Oh my lord, that mineral line is vulnerable. Bailing's getting in there. There's so many SCVs stacked up. Clem trying to run his workers out of there. The commander on the right side, a grimace permanently stuck on Clem's face right now as he tries to weather the storm. But Serral has got a permanently maxed out army rebuilding behind this. Hydra's coming oh. in. The commander on the gold gets taken down by Zerglings. Clem on the back foot and another infester is waiting on that left side looking for another opportunity to fungal. The lurkers come out and cleanse that mineral line in an instant. Oh no. There's another fungal setting up right now. Hence are already off the keyboard. That fungal is gonna just allow him to say, GG, good luck. It's Serral who's moving on in this tournament, getting a clean series, a 3-0 victory over one of the greatest Terran players of all time. The amount of preparation, control, and calm dedication and focus to do that to a Clem that is in the form that he's been in recently. That is absolutely wild. Just never letting your opponent get a chance to play the game that they want to play. And that's what StarCraft is. You know, sometimes we liken it to trying to play a very, very difficult piece of, piece of music, but the other guy's trying to hit your hand with a hammer at the same time. And I feel like <laughs> by the end of this, these games,